Welcome to Texas Truck Channel. I'm Brian. I'm Craig. And we've got, well, we've got a lot of special happening right here. This is the 2023 Chevy Colorado ZR2. And as you can tell, it's perfectly clean and we have not touched dirt with it. Just kidding, this thing's a beast. I like the, I like the dirt wrap on You there. like that? Yeah, yeah, we got that on Amazon. It's, it's like a, a mud splash. It's a, it's a spray applicator. Yeah. Makes yeah. you look cool when you're at Whole Foods. So, look, let's talk about this thing. It is tall. You've got the lift. There's a lot of suspension goodies. But let's talk about the nose in general. I like it. There's a lot of individual angles and lines that I wouldn't maybe normally like. But as a unit together, it works. You've got the it looks like a Chevrolet Trax and uh... like a Trax, like a Camaro. Like it's got the flow tie in the middle, and it's like it can't decide. It does a little bit of everything. It does it all pretty well. You do have a cladding front below um, fascia, actual fog lights, which I like them detached. That's good. Uh, but no light bar, Craig. That's weird, huh? But you mm. do have forward-facing camera. The camera system is solid, and you have red tow hooks, so you know they would work. And real aluminum skid plates. On the Trail Boss Colorado, which we've had, has a plastic air dam that drags on absolutely everything. This is the way to go. I will say on the GMC versions, the Canyons, they all have this cutout right here, or a version of it. This is great for off-road. You can go up ledges, you can side climb things really well. And that is just something I wish more trucks did. Beyond just the ZR2, I wish the other Colorados did that. So that's one of the reasons we like the Colorado so much. Up the hood, you get this power bolt hood, which helps you see the mud a little bit better. We like that. Let's come out and check wheel and tire, Craig. This guy right here, I'm so happy about this. 17s, not 18s, not 19s, not 20s. You've got a properly sized wheel with big enough brakes behind. They're actually a four pot. The brakes are great in this, have no complaints. Goodyear Wrangler Territory MTs. MT is not mud terrain, it is maximum traction, and these things work great. We've had this on, well, lots of terrain. It has been just rock solid. Um, this guy right here is a 285 7017. Shares a lot of sizes with the Wranglers, so there's a lot of aftermarket tires. If you want to change the Goodyears to KO2s or a full on mud train, you can do that. Suspension wise, hard to see the front suspension, but it is a dual upper A arm, lower A arm suspension setup. It has a Multimatic DSSV shock on it. It is not electronically controlled, it's a static control, but it is has a very wide dynamic range so that's cool another thing to point out the lug pattern is the same as the silverado so if you have method wheels off your silverado that you had you owned before you can put them here if you want to but more importantly the spokes on these are bronze and i think they look really good they're dirty right now i like the factory wheel bunch i wouldn't change it at all yeah it looks great coming down the side you see that that's a, not a step that is not a step in fact if you open the door and step on it you'll just slide off but I'm okay with that because this is a purpose-built rock rail. It is here to protect the body, and this will actually support the weight of the truck, and it can articulate over things if you're on a rock. And that's what I want to point out. Don't think Raptor, think Trail Rig. That's what ZR2 is best at, and this is no different than the other ones. Skid plates underneath, all that stuff. Fuel door. One of my favorite things to critique is, is there a freaking cap on this or not? No. Major props. I like that a lot. Uh, I wish everyone did that. Good job, GM. Out back. We won't take a whole lot more time on this, but... We do have a better shot than Multimatics in the rear. Again, no pigtails here, no electrical harnesses, totally self-contained, lots of hydraulic oil in there. It's great, they don't roar out. We've had this at speed on dirt and they don't fade out at all. That's a good, good thing. Come to the rear, along with the theme of protection, something that's different here is full steel bumper, but you lose the side step. There's usually a step here that comes further out. You lose that because you want Better departure angle, and that's why you have that. But you lose that in the Raptor too. You do lose that in the Raptor too. On the Raptor Ranger, we've looked at that recently, there's an optional side step, but you don't get it on the Raptor because of reasons. Um, coming down here, there is no recovery hook in the back. That's okay. You've got a massive trailer hitch back here that can use these eye bolts, or you can slide in your receiver, a recovery point. All good there. Four-way harness in the rear, seven-way. Bob's your uncle, let's see what powers this thing. Under the hood of this beast is, well, prop rod of course but you know what that works and it never breaks you do have enough room to actually reach under here and work on it this is a 2.7 liter dual vert cam four cylinder no hybrid power no v6 this is what you get but you get a massive turbo over here that makes fun sounds and it's paired to an eight-speed automatic that has been by and large problem free for us no issue there uh, no gm eight speeds have been problematic in the past this is not one of them 310 horsepower, 430 torque, and look, we've driven this spec motor and other ones, and this one feels faster than them. So maybe ZR2 gets a little special sauce on top. Time for interior. All right, let's check out the interior of the ZR2 uh, because we want to see what makes it go off-road and all that fun stuff. First off, oh, dampened tailgate. Okay. Very nice. Bravo. And Brian, I want you to come back here and look. I want you to see it says ZR2 back there. Oh, sure. And this is a pickup bed. Oh, great. Okay, let's move on to the interior. All right, checking on, going on to the back. Plenty of room for storage. We've got a couple things here. We're on a 
mentioned that the Texas Auto Riders Association Auto Round, uh, not round truck up, rodeo. Truck rodeo, and so that's why we have trucks here. So, but anyways, pretty interesting design in here. You get you get a grab handle, you get stuff for a water bottle. That's good. Let's get into what kind of room we got. The best thing here is I'm sitting behind myself and I've got some room. This is not bad. Ceiling's a little low here, but there's a cutout for my head, and I'm fine. Um, best part is rear AC. Ooh, that big is deal. hard to find in the midsize segment. I don't know why that's such a big deal, but they have it here. That's good. Kids will like that. USB-C, USB-A, two map pockets, because you're going fast on the trails. You need double you need navigation. That. And the map navigator back here needs an armrest. So, Ryan, let's see if you fit. I'm going to make you do it. I'm going to make you do it. Get that is here. not very nice. I am behind myself here. I rode with Craig the other day, okay. and I don't know how this is going to go. There's no step, Craig. It's what? a rock rail. You don't need a step. Just get in there like a man. Well, I don't know if I'm man who's going to make it. Okay. Okay, all right. Close the door. Ow. Ooh, okay. okay, look. Right. Okay, with the door open, it's fine. And with headroom, it's not great because of the sunroof. But yeah. we've been in one of these without a sunroof, and it's fine. Sure. Right. Uh, to the front. Ow. <laughs> okay, what a baby. All right, moving on to the captain's quarters, Brian. Let's start off with the door there. You'll see that this has got the yellow stitching. Ooh, that's the R2. With the, the, with the nice. gray uh, pleather, which is nice. Durable. And at the top, Brian, that nice uh, door plastic. It is plastic, you're right. Yes, yeah, so, okay, but let's get in. Um, and get in's fine. There's not a step rail, but who needs it? You who see, needs it? You drive a man truck, that's what you need. I'm going to shut the door here because we've got a lot of wind. Brian, in the door pocket, we notice on the other canyons in Colorado, they all have this particular insert. I want to get it out here in a second. Oh, there we this go. One? This one, yeah. Oh, okay. It's got digital camo. I don't know if you can catch it up on the catch it on the camera. Hard to see, but there it is. We mentioned the first thing we mentioned is that should be on the dash. They've done it. It's on the dash. It's around the vent. It looks really cool. I like it. I'm glad they've done it. Uh, hopefully, it comes in on camera. But I will say this is a little boy racer with the what? Uh, yes, with the high fizz yellow and the gray about? and the digital camo. It's a it's little boy yellow. racer. Ah, I mean, it's cool. It fits, but um, it's appropriate. Will, it's appropriate. Um, everything else works in here. Let's start this bad boy up and let's uh, show you the goodies. Um, hit the start button here, and we get a nice little screen. I like this uh, display the best. I'm actually turn the AC off here so y'all can hear me. Sorry, it's really hot today. It's 100 degrees in September, um, you know, Texas. Texas. Okay, so you can change the screen from that. This is our favorite screen. The only thing we don't like about this screen is if you look right here, there's a little cruise control oh, button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, a, and, and it goes all, away, but it, over it, the tip gauge. It's just kind of randomly placed. You think they could have put it here, but I don't know. Let's play for warning gauges. Well, Craig, Doug DeMiro would call that a cork. Uh, ooh, okay. So maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Um, you get oil temp, transmission temp, and then, of course, engine temp. So you get plenty of gauges you need, tachometer, what gear you're in. Don't have flappy paddles, so it's kind of, that's not as helpful as it could be. The only way to shift gears is little plus minus on here, and that's not real convenient, but, you know, it is what it is. The cool thing, though, is they let you change it to Google Maps, Brian, mm -hmm. or... Oh. Apple Maps. Everybody's happy. The, no controversy. Good configurability. We need them to solve the uh, budget crisis in the Senate and the Congress. So that would <laughs> in be healthcare. yeah in healthcare. Yeah, uh, yeah it is good job, GM. You saved the day again. This gauge is pretty cool too because the tack goes across like that. You can rev it and uh, hear the turbo sounds. Turbo sounds That's good. Awesome. That's a good sounding turbo. And then you can go to off road mode, which gives you pitch and roll, which is really neat to see. You can get a little sketch on some things. You get the 20 degrees, it gets kind of sketchy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, again, you get more temperatures here and then what uh, mode you're in and steering angle, of course, and that works as well. And then in the middle, a compass because you need to know where you're going. Boot on the center stack. This is kind of very GM. Everything works here. A lot of the controls for things that normally would have a button or a switch in the old days are in the screen here mm. auto high beams front, front fog lights more controls for traction control you have to go into here and then you can turn it off it's weird it's like if they put buttons somewhere the good news uh, oh, though, like right there you yeah, put buttons oh there. yeah yeah okay the good news though brian is um hype look you always have always on whether car play or not car play works and it's widescreen the the high beam button, or the, I'm sorry, Headlight the light button. button is always That's right true. there. It never goes away. It's you always in the it. exact same spot. That works. I'll also say that um, traction control is annoying that it's not a toggle switch. But when you change the modes here, you hit the dial this button, you change the modes, and you put in the mode you really want, which is, let me get to it here, Baja. Baja, yeah. Baja baby. And it, at, do you want to reduce ESC? Of course I do. It turns all that stuff off anyway. Wait, wait. So go into Whole Foods, reduce. Yes. Here, here's why we like this. Nope. Oh. Here's why we like this screen. Let me get back to it. Um, get to Baja. Hit info. Tells you what's going on. For driving fast. And we just stop there. We don't keep reading. That's, we're just driving fast. This is just hence. So, yeah. yeah. So, that's what we put that on. Everything else works in here. You get... Here's probably the, the best part about the ZR2, Brian. Right here. Rear locker. Mm -hmm. Front locker. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. Essentially, this that's, is a triple lock truck. Well, it is. And Wait. Yeah. Toyota guys. That's what that means. Yeah. But speaking of, I think we should tell them a competitor. Oh. 
Like, what? what? Oh, come on, come on. Okay, okay. All right, here it is, boys and girls. This is the all new Tacoma Trail Hunter. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, man. Oh, man. So, look, we've seen this before. We went to Hawaii earlier this year to see this unveiled, and the Trail Hunter might be my favorite of all the trims. This is new for Toyota and new for everyone, honestly. This is focused on overlanding and camping and adventuring. This is not a Raptor. This is not just a trail rig. It's a let's go out and adventure rig. And they have the, the TRD Pro for the Raptor stuff, if you wanna do that, the Baja Speed stuff. I like that a lot. Now, this is pre-pro. You might see some variances as we go, but this is really what the concept's gonna be. It's just not a production dealer ready model. So keep that in mind as we're going through. But some of the things I like, Craig, in the front alone, branded headlights. Toyota's been really good about this on the previous Tacoma about putting TRD Pro here and things like that. That's a cool little feature and it looks a very high quality to me. Now the nose, you get some bronze in here and this is on the Trail Hunter in particular. I like that the block letters are in a bronze color. Right here is actually an LED light bar, just like you find on the TRD Pro Tacomas. I'm sorry, uh, Tundras. You get that. Down here are- And, and when you hit the high beams, it, automa it comes on. It comes on That's automatically. Cool. So yeah. it acts as an additional high beam on top of the normal filaments that are over here. And it's all LED, everything up here. Something Toyota also has done is they've worked with the aftermarket from conception all the way through before making this truck. It's gonna come to market with accessories already. Um, speaking of rigid fog lights are standard on this. They are both white or amber. They can toggle on the cab. So they're two-way LED. That's awesome. I like that a lot. And then this is plastic on the front, but this metal skid plate. With a Trail Hunter logo. With a Trail I didn't see that. That's good. I like that a lot. Um, very good. I am more importantly, there's a recovery hook down here. There's been a lot of criticism in the past about where these are placed. These are easy to get to right there. And if you want to, you can spray them red and be cool like all the other uh, off-road guys. <laughs> or bronze. Maybe or bronze. That might be better too. Anyways, I liked it a lot. The face is really good. I think the, this is effectively, if you like the way the Tundra looks, this is a scaled down version. You're going to like this too. Let's come around to the side. And I'll say arguably maybe a more finished one because the grill is not so big. That's I true. I think this looks a little more. Yeah, proportions. Wear, I think this wears the look yeah. better uh, personally. Um, so look, iForce Max. The Max. Trail Hunter, yes, Trail Hunters come with that. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Before we get down to the wheel, what is this? Oh, that's so you can go underwater. No, this is on a snorkel. You cannot go scuba diving oh. with this, but it is a high air intake. It's meant to avoid dust. Actually, it intakes from the back right here. It's up high, it's away from tires and all their dust. That's pretty cool. You do get a good fender flare. Um, that helps when you're doing off-road stuff and it covers the tire completely. That'll avoid a lot of debris coming up. This will pass Australia specs. They're gonna be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Wheel and tire, let's start here. Goodyear Wranglers, Territory RTs. These are not MTs. That's uh, like real we, traction. The real traction, yeah. I will be honest with you. This is a adequate tire. This is not very aggressive though. And I think this is gonna be a quiet, MVH friendly, good enough for some dirt and sand and that kind of stuff. And probably rock crawling too, it's totally fine. But if, you, if you're doing muddy stuff, you might swap them out. For trails, fine. For trail work, it's gonna get yeah. it done. Now the wheels, Craig, oh, yeah. I love them. And these Looks are 18s. Great. They're a little bit bigger than some other wheels. They're 18s, but there's still a giant brake caliper back there. And that's yeah. why. Yeah. 265, 718, another familiar tire size. There's a lot of options out there. And if you wanna go up, you can. All right, hop into suspension up here. Look at this upper control arm. It is branded Trail Hunter, it's specific to this. It's a milled aluminum upper control arm. It's super beefy. It's got a big ball joint in the top. And these shocks behind it are old man emu. It, this comes with that as standard. You're not gonna have to go to your off-road supplier and mess with this later on. This is made for trail use. And that's impaired with ARB. ARB and, a, and old emu are, are in cahoots these days. That's really cool. You don't have to mess with that. It's just good to go from the factory. I like that a lot. They're in cahoots? What are they doing? Well, they're fondling fanoodling. Oh. Okay, anyways, moving on. All right, coming up top, you do have a painted mirror on the Trail Hunter. It matches the rest of the paint. Good quality, nothing really to see there. You do also have a rock rail. So, much like the ZR2, this thing is ready for trail use. And this is body mounted. Is this body mounted or frame mounted? I can't tell, Craig, can you see? Oh, look at that, frame mounted. That's a good deal. So if you do go over a big boulder, big obstacle, you're not gonna worry about your rocker panels of the cab getting damaged. That's the whole point of this. But again, not a sidestep rock rail. This is basically a pre-built Tacoma for adventure. Like you don't have yeah. to do any aftermarket stuff. It's all on here. Absolutely. You also get this bed bar, which I think is super cool. And it's kind of mimics the Molly strap holders, but you can get all, kind of, put your jerry cans on here, put your Halif jacks, all the things you need for Whole Foods go right there. Jerry or Timmy. Jerry, Timmy, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. No, this is cool. I like it a lot. And if you look in the bed, Craig will show you this on the interior. It really doesn't rob space. It's actually a really good design. All right, come right here to the rock edge. What is this, Craig? You see that? Oh, uh, yeah. Can... Don't worry. Come on down. There's okay. another one right oh, here. There's, yep. there's more? Okay. This is called a scene light. And what that's ah. for is when you're at the campsite at night, maybe you've got a rooftop tent, maybe you've got a bed tent, maybe you're just chilling out back here while you're grilling, you've got a ground tent. This will project light in the area. It throws really far at night, and you can see what's around you. So if Bigfoot's around, 
got them. Mmm, good. Maybe someone can find them. All right, coming up back. Same wheel and tire, um, but I do want to point out that we have got a new suspension design back here. Coils, baby. You like that? Multi-link suspension in the rear, coil with a live axle, and that is nice to have. Ride quality is probably going to be much better. We've not driven this yet. We don't know about driving impressions, but we suspect that's going to improve a little bit. And the, bad one, the old one wasn't bad, so that should be good. Ron, look at that fully boxed frame. Looks like a Land Cruiser frame. It sure does, man. Uh, what about like a Thunder frame, too? Oh. Interesting. Huh. Hmm. All right. Coming on down. You still have pinned flares in the back. They're not rear. Uh, Craig, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. I thought that? that was only on one side on the Thunder. It's on two on this one. Oh, okay. Look at that. Power tailgate. So when you're out in the wild, you've seen Bigfoot. Your hands are full because you just got them. You have to worry about it. Bump your elbows, it's open. That's pretty cool. Now this is pre-production, so some of these finishes aren't quite exactly how they're gonna be. So please forgive that, but this is for representation purposes. Pretty cool with that. Let's that take your segment. Ooh, hey, how about that, Ford? Only one per only more than one person can do I that. I like that a lot. That's actually is smoother and the way it works. All right, come on down. You get iForce Max badging, I like that a lot. You get a little bit of a uh, colorescent logo here. And you get some that. green hippie points. <laughs> green hippie points, there you go. The more important part that I care about is this is a modular rear bumper. It's all steel, that's not plastic. And this big red hook, that is from ARB. And more importantly, what is this right here, Craig? You see this? Oh yeah, high lift. That is a high lift jack mount from the factory, so it's easily accessible. When you do get the high lift jack, it just goes right there. Good to go, and there's one over here as well. If you're in the off-road scene and you're doing trail rides, that's really important. I don't know of any other OEM brand that has that accessible like that. That's pretty cool. Also standard hitch down here, big eyelets. If you do towing, that's a big opening. I've had a lot of towing situations where that is not very nice. I appreciate that a lot. 6,500 pounds. That's a lot. Not okay, bad. let's check out the interior. Oh, let's check under the hood. All right, boys and girls, what we've been waiting for the whole time is the iForce Max powertrain. Let's come check it out. Under the hood you have, let's see, that hood is nice and light. I like that a lot. We do have a prop rod, which again, reliability is key. Oh, but two you spots. have two spots, one for a low setting. And then one for a tall setting. I'm not sure why you would have two, just have one being tall, but you yeah, know, it's cool, nice to have it. Now, this guy has 326 horsepower and 465 torque combined. And wow. that's because it is a hybrid powertrain unit. See all those orange cables? That's what that means, high voltage. What you have is ice engine in the front, 2.4 turbo four. We've driven that engine in some Lexus products, the Grand Highlander, it's been great. We've also driven the other hybrids for the Grand Highlander with that engine, it's also great. So sandwich between it and the transmission is a big hybrid motor, and that's where that torque rating comes from. The transmission's an eight-speed auto, and we haven't driven that yet, so we'll let you know how that handles later on. But you do have a big air box here. You see the air intake is down here in the corner, so you're gonna get air that's, oh, that's right, it filters through the fender yeah, to the, yeah. the higher intake, that's what it does. So that's pretty cool. We did notice on the TRD Pro that it had a red elbow on it, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure if that's standard production, but really excited about this. Nothing in the class is gonna have a torque number like this. So that's a big deal. All that covered, let's check out the interior. All right, Brian, time to check out the rest of the bed because there's a lot going on here. It's not just a regular pickup bed. Again, pre-production, so we're gonna have maybe a different finish at the end, Texture. but it is a composite bed, which is nice. Just like all the we have had for a while. Don't worry about any rust. Ooh. This is an onboard high capacity air compressor. So you got your quick connect there for your nozzles. You can start and stop it. This is awesome. It also has a USB maybe for a charger, it looks like. Um, anyways, what you can do now is you can go on the trail. You can air down a little bit and you've maybe made your, your trail pass, you've gotten to another section of road, and you don't want to be all wallowy on the road, you can air back up and preset the, the number and it'll get, get you there. That is awesome and amazing. Self-contained, I like that. You continue to keep a nice in-bed storage, which now Ford is copying the Maverick and the F-152 has had it for a long time, yep. it's just there. And then Brian here, because it's a hybrid max, it's not just 400 watts anymore, there's another two in front of it. 2,400 what? watts, that's more than the Pro Power on board on a Super Duty, so uh, pretty impressive. I like that a lot. And of course, in-bed lighting. And as you can see, the little ARB um, sport bar does not intrude into the space too much. And the bed in-bed camera too back there. And in-bed camera like as well. That. Let's move on here. Oh, Brian, I've got my big uh, gear and I'm trying to get out. And I just kind of just do this number. Look at that. That's thoughtful. I like that a lot. Let's check out the interior. Moving on to the interior of the all new Tacoma. This is all new Tacoma, not just Trailhunter, but Trailhunter specific. Brian, look at that little door pad there. I love this green and this kind of orangey goldy oh that's green that's not gray yeah it's kind of a green gray blue okay it's, it's a cool I color it. it's a really neat color again this is a pre pre-production prototype so we you know the finishes might be different on the door later on but you will get this marble light looking granite light looking little i don't know that's a nice nice feature there looks like nature good cell phone holder you can put that in there not a problem um won't go anywhere or brian's wallet and then plenty of door i'm sorry water bottle holders in the bottom of the door that's nice as well so there is not any underseat storage because this is a hybrid and that's where you get the extra battery to get all that 465 pound feet of torque which is not nothing brian you do get, look at these these things are awesome these floor mats look it's a map 
That's so cool. you know where you're going, pretty cool, like that. Um, let's hop on in here and let's see what we get. Um, oh, nice grab handle, thank okay. you. Brian needed that in the other car. Um, and I'm sitting behind, I'm not sure. Um, well, actually, Adam with Toyota, so, but <laughs> Adam with Toyota's got his seat where he's got a position, and I've still got room. I'm not bumping, it's not terrible. There is a moonroof, so there's a motor here. It's a little lower, just like the ZR2. You've, you've got headroom now. But I've got headroom. I, I'm okay, and I can I lean against it, Brian. I don't get rear AC, a little bit of a bummer there, but I do get USB C, USB C, and cup holders back here, which is nice. Um, no center armrest, that's a little bit of a bummer as well, but maybe more room for a fridge or an ARB fridge, who knows. Well, uh, more rooms for accessories there. Let's see if you fit. Oh boy, I'm nervous about this. So there is no side step, it's a rock rail, but you, this truck's actually got a good handle so you can just step up that way. I am nervous about this because the hybrids usually have a taller rear seat and that is an issue. So adults of, you know, Sasquatch level are gonna have a real problem back here, but there is more leg room than the other. So if you're on the if you're on the trail hunting those trails and you see a Sasquatch, maybe don't throw them in the back, put them in the bed. Put them in the bed, exactly. Good, that's where you ride when I get it. Oh, great, thanks. Up top here, Brian, you see three shark fins, not just one. That's not because there's a Sharknado, that's because it's actually, so the wireless, what? Why are you shaking your head now? Sharknado joke? Okay, Yeah, so, well, there's three of them. All right, come on. Okay, that's so the, the <laughs> <laughs> there's a trailer camera you can actually hook up it and it connects to it wirelessly so you can actually see the, what's behind the actual trailer. That's, that's pretty cool. cool. I like that. Moving on to the front, Brian, this is where it all happens, but let's start at the door here. You see that? You see at the top of the door there? What real, uh, what, what you need when you're driving is a pad, a padded rest. That's nice. Uh, anyways, just a nice idea. Uh, continue the theme with the gray, blue, whatever green we're calling that. We're colorblind, I guess, and the orange stitching. Trail Hunter logo in the door, pretty nice. Like that. And the, look, is that like a molly strap? You yeah, kind of Maybe connect things, that's, that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. And then Brian, I'm gonna point out the JBL speaker cover right Ooh. there because I want you to, there's something else about JBL I want you to remind me later if okay, I forget. So, it. all right, let's get on in here and uh, I wanna show a bunch of things. There's a whole lot going on over here. Um, Toyota does buttons and I'm so thankful for, they do, for yes. the buttons they do because we get a lot of them here. Fuel door release, I'm not gonna go through all these, but the important thing here is look, three auxiliary switches that you can, they're pre-wired, so you can put extra fog lights on, extra ditch lights, who knows what else you wanna put in there, maybe a fridge that's powered into something, and that's pretty cool, they stay detuned when they're toggled. Um, and then you also get, this is the light bar turner on and off, and what's really neat here is this fog light, let me show this, I'm gonna start it up. The fog light, when you turn it on, let's see here, let me turn the lights on, okay. So now it's a clear, or white, but if you hit it again, it actually goes amber. That means it's amber. So it actually tells, you can tell if it's amber or clear. That's pretty cool. All right, check out the instrument cluster. Uh, we'll get this door shut here so it stays out of the way. Um, pretty cool, we get the tack on the left, the traditional looking dial and speedometer on the right. Looks really good. You can see the safety sense kind of right there. Um, and for some reason, this thing's the door's still open, but that's okay. Um, um, you can toggle through the settings um, right here on the right or left. It's pretty cool, so you can, you got, that's setting one. You can kind of save whatever you want there. Maybe that's your road setting, setting two. Maybe that's your off-road setting or your adaptive cruise, who knows? Um, maybe you're just driving around town setting. Pretty cool, you can customize those and it stays there. Audio changes, PSI, maybe that's your trail. Who knows? You can change different things in these clusters. That's a really neat little trick. Moving on to the center stack. Brian, the Toyota Media uh, system and in-house suite works great now. It's snappy, it's responsive, no issues there. One of the best in the biz, honestly. Yes, and we still get a volume knob. No tuning knob, but the tuning knob works actually pretty good, so you can uh, go through that. Uh, we get heated and ventilated seats, which is very good, and more toggles, thank you. So if you want to fancy down, you push the button down, it makes sense. Up, up, I mean, it, just simple and intuitive yep. things. That's the way it should be. Moving on down, we get the Qi charging and should get pretty good phone holders, not gonna go anywhere. And then your different drive modes. So you got tow haul and your different drive modes. And then also two high, four high, and four low. And the best part here, Brian, is uh, if you look here, oh, yeah. rear locker, electronic yep, yep. rear locker. We've had that before in Toyota, so that's cool. But look at this right here. That's a stabilizer bar disconnect. Is this a Wrangler? That is pretty cool. So you can actually get a little more uh, off-road articulation. Um, articulation when you're on that trail that maybe you come with a bolt, well, a rock that's a little bigger than you think. You can flex over it that way. Yeah. Brian, uh, oh, two things one. we need to show real quick. Yeah. Poke right here. Oh, USB-C yes. for the co-pilot, a spot for his phone to sit here. This is kind of like what the Highlander does. I really like that a lot. You maintain the dimensional logos we're used to. And also, Craig. I told you to remind me about something. Yeah. JBL. JBL, hit that button. Look, this is your Bluetooth speaker. You get to the campsite. You got your scene lights on. You got the nice scene going around the campfire. Keep the music and tunes going with you. Pretty cool. You and Bigfoot, jams and kombucha. You're Remember, good to Sasquatch go. rides in the back. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe our videos so we can get more of these out. We will get to drive one of these soon. Send in all your questions and we'll get them all answered for you. Thanks for watching.